yeah, we are here to talk about Quantum Mania, brother. And when you get all excited with the 24 inch pythons, you got to grab somebody that's a wrestling fan and you got to bring him in. And who better to bring in than the man, the myth, the legend himself, AJ Orsini, brother? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Out of retirement, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> My first podcast since October. Wow. So, yeah. Man. Yeah. Are you not, oh, you haven't been through withdrawal? I guess after two weeks, it kind of. Honestly? No. Oh, the only the only time I really get to withdraw is when something big happens, like what we're about to talk about right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ant Man, if you have joined us for the first time, I appreciate you. This is our normal co-host Billy, who is always with us, and he says so much prophetic things. You better pay attention, take notes, get pens, get paper, be ready for what he has to say. And if you are here for the first time, we appreciate you. But we'd appreciate you even more if you subscribe. So be sure to do that. And if you don't mind, give us a like. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's very helpful for us. And you'll make your heart feel good. All right. Now that, that all that all that business is out of the way. I heard subscribing to this channel will lower your cholesterol. It will that lower your cholesterol and it will help with your erection. Yeah. So yes. we have everything that you need here. Exactly. Fire right. will be blowing out, coming out of both, both ends there. That's right. That's right. So let's get into... So this is Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania, where Ant-Man and the Wasp find themselves exploring the quantum realm, interacting with a strange new creature and embarking on an adventure that pushes them beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. Oh my God, you read the crap out of that cue card. I, I sure did. <laughs> it's great because I don't have my glasses. So it was I know, that's why I was like, <laughs> was like There's so sweating. much effort right now. <laughs> this I'm is sure really start sweating halfway through that sentence. Okay. <laughs> that says Ant. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get into the cast. So they beefed up the cast in this movie, of oh, course. Yeah. Uh, this is our fourth version of Cassie, the daughter. <laughs> uh, you have uh, Evangeline Lee, uh, Lily, Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer. Jonathan Majors joins the cast. And Bill Murray gets top billing credit only being in it for like five minutes. Uh, David D is uh, in it back from the other films that uh, the first two Ant-Mans, Jamie, Andrew Cutler. And of course we can't be remiss without mentioning Randall Park who played. I Jim. love that he's in here he's <laughs> in the film for like 30 goddamn seconds. That's great. Still gets yeah. a film credit. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. The IMDb page. That's a, does the little card trick. <laughs> Remember me? I did the card trick. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's it done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, All right. Live, baby. Yeah, so let's jump into it. Let's see. All right, so what worked, AJ? We're going to start off with you. What worked for you in this film? I still love the chemistry between uh, Evangelina and Paul, still. Uh, we didn't get much of that in this third one. As a matter of fact, I, we didn't get a whole lot of Wasp at all in this or, entire film. Or Ant-Man. <laughs> <She's, laughs> I'm uh, here. You got Janet. She's the original Wasp, so they oh, kind well, of did like a bait and switch. Absolutely yeah. <laughs> true, yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer got a lot of screen time for someone in 2023 to get that much Michelle Pfeiffer is pretty awesome. At one point at that table, we had Michelle Pfeiffer, Bill Murray, and we had uh, Michael Douglas all sitting at that table all together. I took my mom to see this film. It's the first Aww. MCU film that she's seen in the theaters. And boy, this was the perfect one for her because those are her peoples. <laughs> she was really into it. Yeah, like me, older. <laughs> I, think they're, they're, I think Paul and Evangelina's relationship from the, from the first two movies were so solid that even though there wasn't much here, you can still kind of sense it. It was a lot more Paul Rudd and, and, and I... That you just had the names up, but the, the woman who played Cassie, uh, the recast of Cassie, I thought was actually pretty dope too. I, I was a little concerned at first, but I like her as a performer. I thought I thought Catherine she did a really Newton. good job. Mr. Newton, yeah, yes, 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 Miss Newton, yes, yes. I I thought she did a pretty good job, and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and of course, big Jonathan Majors guy. I I I I got I got a taste of it with He Who Remains uh, from the Low Key series. Was really looking forward to see how this was going to go. A lot of people who saw the pre-screening on Thursday kind of hyped up, oh, King's the best part. So I was like, all right, let's see. I really did think he was the best part, yeah. too. So I, I really enjoyed it. I love where they're headed with that. And and I will get into this as we go through the actual movie toward the end there um, when they showed all of, you know, yeah. I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they left it in a way to where this can go just about anywhere, and I actually dug that. Yeah. 
I mean, this is two weeks out, so I mean, fuck them. You haven't seen it already. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to not do spoilers. I don't care about that. I don't want to fuck oh. up the flow of what we're doing. Oh, here, no, yeah, so yeah. I, that's, we're flowing. We're flowing yeah. good. We're flowing good, baby. All right, Billy Boy, what did you think? What worked? Um, you know, I thought it was an okay movie. I'll admit that. I wasn't like uh, this. Seemed like a phase two film, but I. I liked uh, seeing Michelle Pfeiffer in this thing. I enjoyed. Me too. Yes, I mean, <laughs> she's still she's, she's still good. Great. Yeah. I like, yeah. I was Michelle. thinking Catwoman vibes. I was like, oh yeah. my god. Yeah. <laughs> she still moves. Like her face is, is perfect. Like she hasn't really. Oh, come the on. Only thing like, yeah, technically in the first Ant Man movie, like yeah, that's a little bit. Implied of... Janet was the original Wasp, so yeah, yeah it is. This was that movie where it's like that. Oh, we have Wasp at home. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, we have wasp at home. <laughs> Want the new wasp? We have a wasp at home. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, oh, yeah. All right. Well, for me, what worked best was Kang, absolutely. And of course, you know, we can't be remiss without showing Bill Murray fucking showing up, being a. Yeah, they advertised the hell out of him for like <laughs> for five, him, minutes. For five yeah. minutes. Five minutes. I don't even know the name of the character he played. It was like, oh, that what guy? character? He was Bill Murray for he was, yeah, Bill Murray. Yeah, he played Murray. Lord Kralar, who was aka yeah. Bill Murray. You try telling me that it, it's Bill Murray. It's Bill Murray. <laughs> it was just it Bill was, Murray. It was Bill it's Murray in the manga. Yeah, Bill Murray. Why do I not find it hard to believe that if the world came to an end, Bill Murray would be in the quantum realm for real in real life? I, guess <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he should have just been Bill Murray by himself as is. I thought it would have been actually hilarious if they just so had I Bill ended Murray. Up here. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I'm sure Peyton Reed gave him notes and he just went, sure. And then he, <laughs> yeah. he just went out there and did Bill Murray. Yeah. With Klein, exactly. That's all that it was. Exactly. It was Peter yeah. Venkman. I just think they should have just said, like, yeah. oh, you're playing Bill Murray as Bill Murray. We're actually just going to say, like, he just goes to the quantum realm to uh, like relax. This is his vacation time. He <laughs> <laughs> becomes a pirate and takes over. Uh, I now I did I did feel like there was big stakes because and and not the food kind, but like uh, with Kang trying to escape, I did get a very Tron vibe from it because he had this pulsating piece that was the the catalyst for him to get out of the quantum realm. Just like Clue was trying to get out of the quantum world. Like um, yeah, yeah, it was like this is the video game verse. I'll say it's oh almost the same. God, I didn't even think of that, but yeah, You're welcome. Tron. Yeah, yeah, it's Tron. They basically did Tron mm. in the Marvel verse. Well, not just Tron. I was sitting in the theater and I I posted this on Facebook after the movie was done. But in the theater, I looked over at my mom and my sister who I went with. And I said, you know, for a Marvel movie, this is good so far. But as a Star Wars movie, this movie's amazing. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it's like, as a Star Wars film, as soon as I started they started going through the quantum realm and I started looking at all the... I saw, like, new Jawas. And I was like, oh, my God, where is... The, when they got dressed, right? When they, she goes, oh, we got you, we got us a ride. And they got dressed in that quantum realm garb. Yeah. Was that not straight out of the spring catalog on Tatooine? That yeah, was like, absolutely. Ooh. Down to the goggles, the eyewear, yeah. and everything. They everything, looked yeah. Great. Yeah, they liked it. Like, they were the same Tuscan Raiders. That's what got yes, me. There it is. They were the Tuscan Raiders. Everybody was a Tuscan Raider. It was like, <laughs> really? They, you know what it is? They, they have a budget because Disney lost so much money with Ron DeSantis. They were like, you know what? We're just going to get those Tuscan Raider suits and then you're going to wear those. We'll save all the it's costumes. Multi promotional platform. Is what Marvel <laughs> yeah, exactly. become now. We own it all, anyways. The fuck? Yeah, the true purpose yeah. of pod racers. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Didn't we get that vibe, though, from the flight, from the yep. little thing? I was like, come on. Yep. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally, totally. All right. Let's uh, get into what didn't work. Uh oh. I like that you, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh, indeed. All right, Billy, you start us off. Go ahead, Billy. Mark for you. Okay. Well, I thought one of the things that sucked was a lot of the characters were not memorable. Like, I joked about the Bill Murray thing, but like, I don't remember a lot of the new characters. I remembered Cassie, I remembered Janet, and remembered, but like the Rebels, there was the guy from The Good Place. Yeah. There was the guy with the broccoli head. There was the jello mold guy. The one who wanted holes, right? The one who yes, wanted, wanted holes. <laughs> holes. Yeah. That was built up nice, but it was oh, well, yeah, they, they yeah. built him up nice. There's the guy with the tuning fork for a head, and then there was uh the rebel leader girl. And yeah, that's right. She, I barbarian lady. And the barbarian apparently lady. she's like so important to everybody that 
She couldn't even motivate her own people to attack the tower. They had to get like a total stranger to do it. Yeah. Yes, they, 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 this that, has been leading you for like goodness. 20 years. <laughs> I mean, you can sit down and let this new girl take over. This new girl will tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Here you just got here a day ago. Address the entire <laughs> quantum realm through the microphone. Yes, right because now. you're so much more important than the rebel leader <laughs> who's been here for eons. Right? Yeah, exactly. She was born in the quantum realm. <laughs> All right, AJ, what didn't work for you? <clears throat> I'd like to say loud and proud into the camera. I'll move it down. Oh, getting close with us. Darren. Oh. Darren did not work for fucking. Oh, I forgot about the cursing thing. But yes, Modoc. Modoc did not work for me. Mm. I liked Modoc as an idea. I love the concept, the way they went about it, the quick little origin they gave us. Okay, fine, whatevs. The reveal of it being Darren mm. with the <clears throat> with the non formatted widescreen version <laughs> of his face yeah. with the peel back. I was I as soon as I saw it, I turned to my brother and said, "Is that Krang? What is this? Are they fighting?" Are they fighting Krang from the Ninja Turtles? Oh, I was like, this man. is crazy. <clears throat> and then the quick, like he's been in, he's been in the quantum realm apparently this entire. I'm going to do it again. This entire time, just burning at the idea of what Scott did to him, time for year after year after year, he murdered all these people. He was at the beck and call of of Kang for all this time. He, he never thinks he'll see Scott again. He's just trapped in the quantum realm. He sees Scott, and within 30 minutes, he has a heart, and he just doesn't, you know, we're all going to work on the same side now. And I'm just like, no, no, no. I don't <laughs> want to do this. Please don't make me do this. It was so many facets. Up until that point, it was so many facets of this movie that I liked. And then when I saw Modoc, I was so excited. And when the helmet came up and it was Darren, my, I, <laughs> yes, that is haunting. Look at that. That is what's under your bed justice. at night, kids. It looks much more Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Than yes. that movie. Oh my god, that was very George Lopez esque. That was I was like, what is this? And they didn't promote it. It was actually it was considered to be a surprise. I'm sure. Right. Right. But that was what you considered a surprise. I was like, oh, yeah, that was no. definitely a surprise. <laughs> Uh, it oh, was yeah, surprise. definitely right. was. Oh, oh surprise. This is what our animators were forced to work at to the point that they were almost exhausted. I'm not even going to criticize the CGI, the idea. Oh, no. I'm just thinking, like, there what did they do to these animators that that was what they passed? I mean, I'm assuming they're in front of their laptop suffering so whip. much. <laughs> just to get whipped. <laughs> the crack of a whip thinking, behind them. I'm thinking back to like there's an old Clerks animated series where they just had like an animation studio and they just were had like the guard whipping everybody. Everybody <laughs> work. Yes. Yeah. That exactly was the Disney the animation work. studio. And That's that wall of text you just crash. see. It's just all these people just getting beat. Jesus. Okay. They we sketched got all that through MS stretched. Paint. That's good enough. <laughs> he said MS Paint. <laughs> Jesus oh, no, Dan. No. Oh, and I should have seen it coming. They teased it. They yeah, teased they it. I should have seen it coming when she said, "Oh, my life's never been normal. I had a bee try to kill me when I was six. I'm like, ha ha ha! Look at that. It's a callback. And then Darren. Yeah. And I went, "Oh no! It wasn't a callback. It was yeah. a setup, and that's worse." <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man. And then his little speech at the end. He's spitting up blood. I was like, God, darn it! Please stop. <laughs> oh. uh, did not work. Did not, did not work. work. Did not work for me. What did you think, Joe? Oh man, the what didn't work for me is this: I the the how far back they pushed the wasp. Like she was the main deal in the last movie. She was the, in the title card. Ant Man in the, the title wasp. card, and where is she? She's home. She's Complete the, non-factor. Yeah, Complete like non-factor. Yeah, like elite non-factor. Just totally. Nah, I'm here. I, I have <laughs> a feeling she said, "You know what? I'm not gonna hide." This lesbian thing anymore. I'm just gonna be me. And they said, "Word, watch <laughs> this." Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they just said, "You are now eighth <laughs> on that on that title card." I'm thinking Michelle Pfeiffer is the wasp in this one. Yeah, like, absolutely. The base and switch, absolutely. And they made yep. Hank the real Ant Man, right? We're talking to the ants in this one. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's true. Good, good call. Good call. The other thing was, oh, I like the suits. Yeah, the suits are very cool. But how did 
the daughter suddenly uh, know how to get to the quantum realm? Because that was something um, that uh, fantastic. Because it was horror. convenient to the plot. Obviously. <laughs> That's the only thing that really works. Because just like she was also apparently very proficient in using her suit to begin with. Yeah, she had no time. Well, I mean, they kind of alluded to the fact that. Well, no, they, hold they, on a second, though. All members of that team, except for Cassie, were all blipped. Yes. So right, yeah. her counter, her time of learning all of this stuff, including quantum physics, right. started right at the blip. Yeah. So it wasn't like she had five years worth of university knowledge no. to figure out physics no, she and how to send a signal to a place where time and space doesn't exist. She had yes. about a year's worth of time. Yeah, she was good. <clears throat> and she yeah, had it all figured she... out. Plus, didn't, she didn't know that her dad was in the quantum realm, so she wasn't like doing like a rescue mission. She thought he got blipped with the others. Wasn't a concern. She just thought everybody was dead for like forever. Yeah, exactly. And then but, all of a sudden, boom, just like that. I now know quantum physics. She can do quantum physics. She can she apparently can execute suit. martial art moves. She's a martial she artist. Can, she can utilize her pin particles in her suit and has enough courage to rally an entire army in the quantum realm. All within. Yeah. That's a oh. busy 365, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Plus, she also, for some reason, would occasionally tell Ant Man, like, you weren't doing enough to save everybody. And it's like, oh, yeah. Well, of course, she like, fit wait in a second. A miserable the dude that brought there. back half of the universe's population right. didn't do enough for people. Right. I loved how casual everyone was about that. Oh, he's being such a braggart. I saved the universe. Exactly. Half I didn't save you money all... on your Geico insurance. I saved yeah. half universe. of all life. Right. Thanos killed trillions with a snap. I thought of an idea to bring them back. Yeah, you're welcome. When is the day I will ever stop talking about that? I don't understand. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. The fact that I have to pay for my coffee, play the they were trying. He was trying to play the game with them, and they were so oh, that'll be twelve bucks. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Next time when I have someone snap, you won't be in his memory when he does that. <laughs> hey, bring hey Hulk, bring everybody back except for that prick who charged me the twelve bucks. That exactly, car. exactly. You leave him right where he is. Yeah. Well, he's halfway gone anyway, so nobody would miss. Him. Yeah, he's he's lived his life. <laughs> he's had a good run. <laughs> lived the life of a barista all the way to the end. Good luck, Spider Man. <laughs> Is that bootleg Stan Lee? Were they? I think that's what. They yes. Were yeah, that was bootleg. <laughs> that's Stan Lee right there. <laughs> now, to Billy's point, that's the Stan Lee at home, right? Was like, we, yeah, we Stan have Lee. Stan Lee at, at home. That's. that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we have Stan Lee at home. Good oh. luck, Spider Man. That's, oh. Dan, that's Dan McPhee. Dan he's McPhee is, is hanging at the house. Oof, 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 oof. And <laughs> of course, I hated the fact that they killed Kang off. Uh, that Did was, they though? Again, that's the second time they killed off Kang. I, mean, I, like, I would like to make the argument. He's the Park Kenny of the Marvel, Marvel Universe right now. <laughs> so I would like to submit to the court here. I'm I'm new to the show, but I'd like to submit to the court. I don't think he was killed. You think he I just ended? I don't think that was the same space that Ant Man ended up. I will provide evidence for my argument. Okay. Uh, midway through the movie, when they had Janet and Kang interacting with each other, this is during the peaceful time when they were yeah. working together right. to save the ship. She wanted some BBC. When she saw the vision and panicked, she used the pin particles to shrink his core right mm. now when he shrank the core it was still reachable they just needed pin particles to shrink someone else small enough to re-shrink it back just like what they did with ant-man when right. ant-man went into that area blah, 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 blah. this time around it increased in size and then excuse me not increases this uh, this time it shrank again but this time kang was in it so what's to say that when it absorbed Kang into itself and shrank, that Kang's just not in that same world where Ant-Man was living in eternal purgatory until he could figure his way out. Yeah. Ant-Man didn't go down there and die. He found the thing and he brought it back to its original yeah. size. And he made so, himself, made himself, and, and made himself. Exactly. Made himself and made himself. <laughs> Extra love the Baskin Robbins guy being in there. <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, that how, was great. And how supportive yeah, was he was. The highlight of the joke. Yeah, let's go. It's for Cassie. Come on, let's go. <laughs> and it's just again, this is just fan theory. It's just I, I, I believe 
that the first time they took us into that smaller world for him to bring it back to bigger size was an illustration that this that the pin particles never really destroy anything. They just change its size. Right. So when it did that and it absorbed Kang, to me, there's a big chance it wasn't really a death. And I'll further this theory more as we go through, because I, I think this connects to something else also with its ending. Wow. But, but again, I'm just playing with ideas. You get okay. it, yay or nay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Well, if that's everyone's what didn't work, then I guess we should look into how other people thought of it with the reception. Let me guess. Oh. It was yes. too woke. Well, <laughs> no, I'm not going to get into what people really oh, thought. Okay. I'm just going to get what I over. thought is it needed a bear doing cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Billy, doesn't everything need yeah. a bear? I can Absolutely. think of the argument a fourth birthday party needs a cocaine bear. <laughs> you can have Billy in the background if you want, but at the party, should be bear high on cocaine. That's that would be amazing. 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 So we're just going to take a look at the Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, uh, Rotten Jonathan tomatoes. Majors is crying in this one because it got a 47% rotten on the yes. tomato score for the uh, tomato meter. And that's all out of 370 reviews from critics. Well, that's because then... critics agreed with me that it needed the bear. <laughs> At least 200 of those are bear related. Yeah. Well, you know what? I thought the bear was going to be in there. And then 5,000 plus verified accounts like the movie but uh this is officially the lowest scoring marvel film to date and it started the conversation on the internets that is marvel's time up are people fatigued is this over are we marveled out is this the end of the mcu what do you guys think we'll start with aj because he's laughing pretty hard <laughs> no of course not no not even close I'll, I'll make the argument that a, a lot, or a, a, should I say, a bulk of the people who watch these movies aren't even online. Don't let the minority voices of a few people who happen to have verified accounts mm -hmm. tell you that uh, a lot of the a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that's shared online. It's literally just that it's shared online. Five six people share an opinion so strong that the other people just jump on board and it's all what it is. There are people shooting on this movie before it came out. Yes. Which seems to be the new trend, but it started with popular movies. Now it seems to be the trend with, with almost every movie that comes out. Put a random trailer on on YouTube and go to the comment section, and I'm telling you right now, they're all crapping on the movie before it comes out. It's what's yeah. cool. It's what's trendy. It's what's hip. It's not factual. What they're setting, even the hardcores of the hardcores who criticize either the feminist movement to it or the wokeness of it. That's why I was making the joke before or the gender swapping or whatever it is that people are complaining about. I can assure you, I will bet my last bottom dollar when we get to secret wars, they will be there. Mm -hmm. They can crap on Ms. Marvel and she Hulk and Ms. And the Marvel's movie coming out. They can, they can crap on Oh, Moon Knight didn't do this for me. or little key series didn't do this for me. When Secret will mark it down, this is the clip for you too. When Secret Wars gets here, they will all be there. Mm -hmm. If it's taking a long time to get to the parts they want to see, that's one thing. But they're criticizing it. If you genuinely didn't like something and you have a genuine criticism for what that is, whether it be writing, whether it be ambiance, whether it be casting, all this person didn't fit. If you have a legitimate reason, I can understand that. But to hate something you didn't even see, or didn't understand doesn't make any sense to me. Is there fatigue for some? Sure. For those who aren't really following, then yeah, you get fatigue. If you're a cat, it's like any other thing, wrestling, sports, whatever it is. If you've seen it enough times, yeah, you need a break, but I promise you it'll get there. The same people who get tired watching the NBA through the season will be there for the NBA finals. Yeah. It's the, it's the same thing. here. That is a there great are people who, there are people who don't watch football all year, but will pack their house and buy food for the Super Bowl. It's the same deal. That would it be is, me. I made chicken. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm Maybe. trying to tell you, <laughs> Kang's, Kang's dynasty is first. So for everybody who's, oh, I'll pass on this one. I'll pass on this one. Okay. Then they're going to go see Kang's dynasty. They go, what the hell happened? Mm -hmm. They'll go back. They'll watch it. And then in a year's time, when it's time for Secret Wars, they'll all be there and they'll all be ready. 
Yeah. If I have the assumption that Kevin Feige has toilet paper rolls made from all of the Rotten Tomato scores through all of the MCU films, and he just casually goes through his day wiping his ass <laughs> with what Rotten, <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes has to say about anything. Yeah. Because who goes online and goes, man, I'd love to see this movie. What did Rotten Tomatoes say? Up oh, 13%. Sorry, kids, can't go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah never yeah. happened in history. No, no. Even for people who are told by their friends, this movie's no good. There's usually a genuine curiosity. For everybody who hated Miss Marvel, the, the first one, Captain Marvel, still made a billion dollars. Yep. And that's not from hate viewing alone. No. The Marvels will do good numbers too. They all do good numbers. Post pandemic, so these are still one of the leading movies uh, in the box office to this date. So, no. It isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It will ebb and flow just like everything else. This the MCU is 10 years old. It's gonna have, it's gonna ebb and flow like everything else does, but it ain't going nowhere. No. All right, Billy. I'm still kind of amazed. Like this one had like the negative backlash and stuff. I mean, I've been ran throughout like Thor the Dark World, Iron Man 3, mm. uh Eternals, and this is the one that they're gonna be like, oh shit, no. Oh, they crapped on those too. Yeah, they oh, did. Oh, yeah, I know. But I'm mean, like, this is not like the sign, like, oh, shit, we, they should be worried. It's like, there are some things I can say. Like, I, I would, I like Cassie. I mean, like the movie, the comic book version more so than the movie one. But I still like the effects. I still like the visuals in this. They did do a lot of trippy stuff. I, there's stuff I wish they did more of, but I like the Baskin Robbins guy. I like the. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, basically he's like the uh the Paul Rudd uh anthill was like the key thing of this thing. <laughs> that was a great video. He was so optimistic. He was, he, was so he really was for Cassie. Come on, guys. Yeah, and then there was a lot of like weird stuff, and I liked the weird. That was like the cool thing. Like the broccoli head guy, uh, just and like uh, Douglas even pointing out, like, does that guy have broccoli for a head? Like, <laughs> yes, that's actually interesting. Or them actually acknowledging, hey, wait, your buildings are alive? Yours aren't? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of cool. So, like, yeah, you have clever moments, but the bad thing is they're kind of bogged down. And I just hope that uh, they don't turn around away from doing like the wacky stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, you know, I really was surprised at the negative reaction because there was so much fun at the end with Kang and then, of course, the end credits with the variants and there were so many different variants and there's a tie-in with Loki and they're really focusing on the building, the world building here and I, I was surprised to see that so many people didn't like it. And Yeah, it was a little clunky. There were areas where I was like... Oh boy, you know, and it got really weird. And and there was a guy with a, a, <laughs> a broccoli for a head, and I was like, "What is going on?" Which but Michael, I, they really nailed that line because you know, in front of him is not an actual guy with broccoli. No, in the in the actual staging area is just some dude with a sign. But his face was like, "Is that guy?" Like he nailed it. He was like, <laughs> he acted like there was a dude with broccoli for a head there. Exactly, like, that's pretty dope. Yeah, that's yeah. skill. That's talent. That's, that's <laughs> acting. The old man still got it. That's right. Yeah, that gets an MTV award or something. It should. Because I don't see like Oscars giving out to people like best reaction to a broccoli head. <laughs> the new, the new award. I just want to see five different video clips of people trying to sell the broccoli head. <laughs> it's like, yeah, broccoli head. Yeah. Uh, and I found it to be more um, multiverse of madness than multiverse of madness was. Oh, that's also like the other thing. Like they actually did the visuals. Like I, I was disappointed with the Sam Raimi movie with the multiverse because I was like, every now and again when I see like these backed up visuals and stuff like this, this is like, first I had seen like that everywhere, everywhere, all at once, whatever that Michelle Yeoh movie, and I was like, mm -hmm. that's a multiverse movie. I wish we got. Then I get like this where they have whole abstract visuals and stuff. I'm like. Why didn't Sam Raimi get this one? Give yeah. Sam Raimi this one. Yeah, it was weird. Like I felt that there was more, you know. I was actually impressed. This is Peyton Reed, the guy that everybody said was the safe and boring one compared to like Edgar Wright. <laughs> <laughs> Visually, uh, this movie actually set itself apart pretty cool from the first two Ant-Mans. Yes. 
Like, if you look at the trilogy, if you don't pay attention to any MCU film and just watch Ant Man 1, 2, and 3, there is leaps and bounds made between 2 and 3. There's a yeah. lot going on there. So, for everybody who's like, well, we got here too quick. Well, I, I don't know about that. It was no, I definitely don't. Long agree. road to get to the quantum realm again. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, of course, we have how Jonathan Majors himself uh, reacts to the negative Ant Man. And that is, of course, in the news. Yes, this was a legit news report. He was interviewed by CNN. And, uh, you know, they did say his was the standout performance in the film. But, you know, one thing he has said, and he was quoted, one thing I will say to my team as we are leaving a premiere and they're reading the reviews, I just keep saying, how's the movie doing? How's the movie doing? I will try to clean my plate and take care of my part. Those responses, you're straight. You're good. They like you. And that's what's important to me. (laughs) So he's like, he gets it. He's like, yo, it's making money. I, they like me, <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> and to be fair, liking him is the most important part because I don't know if we're getting any more Ant Man films. We're getting a shit ton of Kang. So if we didn't yeah. get that started correctly, that would have been a whole mess. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He's going to be the main standout for the next couple of movies. So, which brings me to what I was teasing earlier about bringing up because mm. Billy, Billy hit on it before we went on the air here that we've now. My theory aside, let's just take the movie for what it is and say that, yeah, Ant-Man defeated Kang and Kang died. That is now two Kang deaths, as Billy has has mentioned. Mm -hmm. The entire Infinity War was based on this idea that the Boogeyman was coming, right? This mythical figure with Thanos, right? The Boogeyman's coming. To the point where it legitimately, if you go to any YouTube video that does reaction videos, you'll see that that one moment in Infinity War when Thanos finally appears. He's mm-hmm. here. Now, we did get a glimpse of him in Guardians of the Galaxy in the chair, which was awesome. But this was the real deal. This was game time. Okay, here we go. Thanos is here. That got a genuine reaction from fans because, okay, we've been built up this promise. Now we're here. Uh, we got Kang about midway, I believe Loki was, of Ms. Uh, Phase 4, but not the Kang we thought, the He Who Remains. He Who Remains, yeah. This is our first, okay, Kang the Conqueror, Conqueror, right? Yeah. This is King the Conqueror. He screamed it. I'm tearing the whole yeah. thing. And, ah! and, and yeah, and he's bragging about all these Avengers that he's killed. Are you the one with the hammer? Oh, you killed Thor. You're a badass. Okay. Then he loses the Ant Man. <laughs> Queen, right? Yeah. Just straight up. And so I can see how people have this in their head. You want to talk about fatigue? My fear is actually not MCU fatigue. It's going to be Kang fatigue Mm. because we're already hearing he's going to be in Loki. He's going to be in this. He's going to be in that. That buildup with Thanos was so great. But now it seems like down the pike, now that four phase four is behind us, we're going to be getting a whole lot of Kang between now and the end of six. So that's my actual genuine fear. When they showed that stadium with all of those Kangs and me as a creator myself, all I saw was possibilities. Look at all yeah. these different things that I can, all my toys and my tool and my toy chest that I can play with. And that's where I actually have a genuine concern. I don't need everybody going one on one with Kang. Right. And, and, and don't do the wrestling angle where, you know, in non title matches, a champion gets his ass beat every time. But then when it comes to the title match, now the guy wins. <laughs> he's unbeatable yeah it's a exactly. really similar thing like individually they all have their strengths and weaknesses against certain variants but don't worry at king dynasty when we put all the kings together you guys don't stand a chance yeah okay. <laughs> because now you're making king the underdog in this and that's not what you want you, you want him to be overbearing you want him to be a conqueror you want him to be the guy that he promotes himself to be which is the slayer of adventures in king's dynasty i am anticipating we're gonna lose some people yeah, no, I, I feel it's like a, not to make another wrestling analogy, but it's like the Royal Rumble when you have a, a, the first few numbers just build that ring up for a bunch of people, and then here comes the big strong guy somewhere in the middle who just starts eliminating people. I I hope that this is something that is going to happen here that we got to introduce to so many new characters and all these different things, and then here comes King. Just okay, now psh, that's it. I'm cutting the roster in half. Oh, here's what's going to happen. 
Oh man, like TKO by so Kang. That just made me think of like an awesome thing that I, just a fan theory or just like something that would be awesome if they'd ever did this in Guardians. All the people that are following James Gunn to DC when he leaves after this movie, if Kang yeah. is the one that kills them. Yo, Kang just shows up with Guardians 3, just starts waxing everybody. <laughs> oh my god! I need him in the movie. You just be like, I am doing DC's work. <laughs> DC would be like somebody named with the initials, like what kind of an inside way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Doing the work, and he kills everybody with guns. Oh, <laughs> that would be, that would be perfection. Yeah, uh, some, sort be of, some sort of hand blaster gun, some gun like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! Here we go. The free for all. This is the section where you can bring up anything in the, in regards to the film and what you think can happen. Uh, we kind of we're getting into some theories. This is our theory space. Uh, I'm going to jump the gun. My bad. I've done like oh, two man. theories already. Oh, yeah, yeah, not I'm not I didn't sure the be a format sheet. I've done this before. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. I got more theories, I guess. <laughs> Shut them all. Shut them all. <laughs> Um, I you know, we we know Kang's gonna be the big bad in well, a couple of the movies coming up. I, I would like to see him appear in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but uh, there is a movie, uh, excuse me, there is a streaming show that's coming out that I have a feeling is going to connect with Kang as well, besides Loki, and that's Secret Invasion. Mm. I think that the Skrulls are gonna have an issue with Kang too. And I have a feeling that Kang in this ver version of the universe is going to be the reason for the destruction of the Skrull Empire and why they're spread across the galaxy. And we're going to get a lot of fun with uh, motherfucker himself, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh, that's Samuel L. Jackson, the man that taught a generation how to curse. <laughs> <laughs> efficiency and intensity. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. you know, I, I do think that Modok is not done yet either. I think he's going to actually escape the quantum realm and he's going to have his giant head coming all the way in your night. I didn't bring the liquor. Oh my God. The oh. horror. No, 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 dear God. And he's no. bald. Is Modok supposed to be bald? No, Modok usually has like a weird mop top. Oh my God. In all his iterations. So I find it. I don't know why I expected Dolph Lundgren for Modok. I have no idea why. <laughs> But I just, I don't know. If Ant Man oh, dies, he dies. Yeah. <laughs> I will follow Kang. I will get Kang. <laughs> now you went into Arnold all of a sudden. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Bro, I went from uh, Australian to Austria. I don't even yeah, know if Todd Dolph is Australian. Yeah, he's not Aust Australian. Kang, no. Kang dude. Oh, no. We spend too much time with the Australians. Yeah, and everybody's Australian. <laughs> <laughs> we got theories, man. Free for all. Yeah, let's go, Billy. What do you got? What you got, Bill? Okay. Oh, oh, we got a, we got a suspense the, building. The whole reason why all of uh, the Squirrel Invasion happens, and the whole reason why the evolutionary is making uh, raccoon people, it's all because Kang is working for Mephisto. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Yeah, he brought back. He brought Mephisto confirmed. That's <laughs> dumb. <laughs> God damn point. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just out of spite at this point, they're like, you know what? Pull back on that. Let's just see how long we can make this. <laughs> how long we can make these people wait for this. <laughs> it's all a ruse. <laughs> all the cruel I, I, I could resist. Uh a uh, running joke that we've had on this channel for like the longest time is every time we did the She Hulk review yes. or WandaVision, like we would always have uh, Joe talking about how Mephisto is going to be in this episode. Mephisto's coming. <laughs> Mephisto's coming. He's probably going to show up for Agatha, the Agatha Harkness series. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's where it's coming back for that. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's yeah. All over the back. internet when that show comes on. We'll I'm be cool. first. We'll be first for sure. Uh, you heard it. You heard it here first. Yeah, folks. Here as as first. Kang works for Mephisto. <laughs> Kang works for Mephisto. Oh, my oh God. Yeah. All right, AJ. What What do you got? What do you got? I will. I don't want to take credit for this. This is my wife's theory. As we were talking about the movie on the way from the, th we always every time me and my wife always start rattling stuff off about the movie, and she goes, "I have an idea." And I'm like, "Shoot, babe!" <laughs> and she was like. They never did clarify what she saw in the vision. Oh. We're talking about Janet. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she touched the ship when it was alive, reads his thoughts, the ship, yeah. and they show you visuals of him just destroying mad stuff. Never really clearing what it was he was destroying. In fact, when Kang realizes that she saw something, because she looks shook, mm-hmm. he tried to talk to her. She jumped right into action because all she saw was a pure, unadulterated monster, and she ain't wrong. But when they do reunite, it's literally the first thing he says. It's the only thing on his mind for all these years. I never did get a chance to ask you, what is it that you saw? Yeah. And then to clarify, who did you see me doing that to? Yeah. Which to my wife, and I'm going to give her all the credit, led to her that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't the real bad Kang. Because we met He Who Remains. Yeah. Who took credit for ending the multiversal war. Right. So we do know that there are variants that are not so bad. As a matter of fact, in the Loki series, we get introduced indirectly without naming him. We get introduced to Victor Timely because he who remains tells the story with the liquid about a man who was on Earth, who was a variant of his that discovered the multiverse and discovered the method in which to travel in between the dimensions. Using that method, that is how he who remains ended the multiversal war. Mm-hmm. He also in the Loki series stated, my wife, she's brilliant, <laughs> also stated that he who remains was trying to maintain peace during that time after the war was over. Again, never really specifying with whom the peace he wants to keep. So this led her to believe when they showed the stadium of all the variants and those three variants in particular. Yeah. Very, very concerned about the fact that they that he was banished and then killed because they all wanted to take they wanted to be the ones that killed him because apparently they must have been that angry with him. Right. Earlier in the film, when the when everyone discovers that he was banished there, the first question that was asked was, well, who the hell would banish him? Who would have the ability to banish Kang the Conqueror. How about Kang? Yeah. How about the many versions of Kang? So the thing is this. This is one of the theories that I had and one of the theories that she came up with and that maybe this was the one Kang. Maybe there's more, but let's just say for the sake of keeping this description short, that she's the he was the one Kang that was banished because while he is a conqueror and while he is a mean son of a bitch and does what he has to do because he's got to do it, Maybe he was looking at the other kings and thinking to himself, maybe this war thing isn't what it's all cracked up to be. There's got to be an end to this at some point. Remember, he who remains was completely drawn and tired and, oh, I'm so done with this. Yeah. Maybe stopping all of these kings was a way to get out of it. One of the most important, and this is not a Marvel thing, but one of the most devastating things for a person who is immortal is after a while, they start to yearn for death because Mm -hmm. it becomes too much to strain on the mind. So what if this one king was trying to stop them and they band together and banished him? Oh, King's yeah. dynasty, I already told you guys, I predicted there's going to be a lot of deaths. But think about this. If he's an Avenger killer and he knows who the Avengers are and he's gone down the path with them many, many, many times, what's the best way to stop an entire unit of Kangs than to have a Kang on your side? Mm. If he's not dead, like I predicted, and he's just in another quant version of the quant a smaller version of the quantum realm and is reachable well by then we probably won't have an ant-man and wasp but like this stinger girl who can right. apparently be a giant now too yeah she figured it all if out she knows she, what to do if, oh yeah she she's she's got it all figured out <laughs> if she can go down there and i don't know rescue kang and convince mm. kang you know what we like your message these guys are jerks how about we do this together teach us because remember, he remains mentioned that when the Avengers went back in time in Endgame, that that was part of the plan. The TVA said, no, they were supposed to do that. So they allowed him to do it once, but you, we did it on our own. We were just figuring stuff out. Now we've got you, the master of time travel. Teach us. How do we stop Kangs? Do we stop them all at once? Do we split up in units like we did for Endgame and stop Kangs in their individual areas and timelines? How does this work? Just something to play with, I guess. It could be a babyface king out there. So just throwing that out as a as a oh, possible thing. I love it. I love it. That's I a got, good one. I gotta chime in on that because like, yeah, because 
uh, Ant Man did even say, "Hey, wait, didn't he say that if he died, that he would that be the end of the world? That he might be the one thing that stops. He might have been the thing that saved him. Did we just right. doom the world? Right. No, <laughs> that's right. That's very and good. Up. And it's Billy Baby. Oh yes, man. Right. And also just." I lo love one thing pointing about Stinger possibly helping Kang out of the quantum realm. If that leads to like young Avengers after secret wars, just mentioning this about the young Avengers historically from the comic books, a variant of Kang was one of the original young Avengers, a very young a kid version of Kang was iron lad, the original, well, one of the original founding members of young Avengers with Cassie. Wow. It was, it was Cassie. Uh, Isaiah Bradley's grandson as Patriot. Who got uh, introduced in the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. We have right. Wanda's kids who got introduced. There's exactly. a lot of young Avengers already. And then Hawkeye's daughter, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have this prediction that the veterans will, will sacrifice themselves in Secret Wars so that the young Avengers can pull it off. Mm, mm -hmm. Man, we're getting pass, big pass free for all that, moments here. Pass, pass that torch type. Yeah, thing. there you go, kid. Oh, just oh. brainstorming. <laughs> what, yeah, they're gonna replace Iron uh, Lad with uh, Iron Heart. They're gonna replace. Pa they might. They'll choose between Patriot and America Chavez. One of the two will be on the team. But so many new characters. Yeah. That's why I don't understand people hating Phase Four. There's so many new toys to play with. I don't right. understand. It. I don't get it. I've had my qualms. Eternals wasn't amazing, but still, like, just a little bit of something, you know. If you didn't like how the stories began, great, but you're going to be happy all these pieces are on the table when we start. I mean, look how look at how many pieces we have for Endgame, and we have more pieces on the table now than Endgame, and they haven't even gotten together yet. Exactly. That's insane exactly. how they're able to pull this off. Yeah. But it is what it is. Come on, James Gunn. We get still got to be careful going, because hey. it could always get worse. <laughs> Uh, some of the people forget like what we lived through as Marvel fans before the MCU. Yeah, the the Captain there was a Captain America movie from the 1990s with the Italian Red Skull <laughs> and the hey, rubber Captain ears. America! <laughs> that was a thing. That was well, there was a, a Generation X movie on Fox. Yeah, there's there's a lot of bad. They said the Punisher with Dolph Lundgren, which I enjoyed. Or Nick watch. Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. starring David Hasselhoff. I was just going to mention that one. Half <laughs> in German, kids. The Fantastic right. Four series, all kinds of... Oh yeah, Japanese Spider-Man. Uh, oh, oh, Japanese Spider-Man was awesome. The Emissary of Hell does not get... <laughs> awesome to us. You should see <laughs> yeah. the reaction to people who see that shit on YouTube. <laughs> what am I watching? Oh, my God. <laughs> the same... This is what, to answer your question again about fatigue. The people who live and die by this, this is the moment they've been waiting for. Yeah, they're not so the leaving. people who came in as the casual, they're fatigued. Yeah, which is fine. Go take a seat on the bench because the rest of us who love this and live this and breathe this, and this is not just something that we're into as a fan, but something that actually encompasses a lot of our life, and 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 is in our minds and in our brains on a constant basis. And like we're doing here, we're spitballing ideas where they can take this, and then we're referencing the comics and how it can tie in. The casuals can't do that. That's why they're fatigued. They're on to the next fad. But for us, this is life. So no, we're going to be here until the wheels fall off. For as long as Kevin Feige draws breath, I will be here with <laughs> yes. popcorn in hand. Yes. Yes. Oh, plus, I can never shit on anything because I was a fan of Wolverine, the comic books from issue 75 to 100, the Bone Claw years. Oh, wow. I remember. Yeah, that, that was my era of Wolverine. That's when I first got into the books. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually explained that to my wife. The whole pulled the animatium out of the body, but he still had claws. And my wife was like, "Huh?" And I showed her <laughs> Google images of it, and she was like, "Well, I was, I was still pretty badass. Those were pretty sharp looking claws." There, it's like, "There you go, get on board, babe." Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll never forget that comic when I think it was Children of the Atom when Wolver um, Wolverine gets his shit wrecked by. Magneto. Oh, it was Fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. I, I still have that somewhere yeah. with the foil card on the cover. Oh, well, Magneto was like, you know, I'm sick of your shit. Yeah, that's exactly what he was like. I am I I like, true. Magneto, that was too far. I'm shutting your brain off. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Professor X was like, oh, my. it was like a Rocky film. He went to the body and just turned. Yeah, so good. Over. So good. That I wish. I hope they do that when they do uh, X Men. I would love there's it. actually now that you mentioned that there is a villain that I'm actually surprised 
Well, not surprised because we couldn't do the mutant thing, but onslaught. You think that's a possibility? Yeah. At some point? Yeah. Like yeah, once they yeah. get things introduced and now and we're in the X-Men start jumping on the scene. Ooh, yeah. that's damn. A- dope. So damn. Dope. I've been going to do that. Oof. So good. Ooh. So good. Ooh, me. I can't wait. Hello, Kevin. Yeah. I believe in I stand with you, Kevin. Mm-hmm. So much, in fact. I, I, I there's a piece of me that believes James being a DC is like Kevin's like, go ahead, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you can take try. The take the job. No, 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 no. The other way. Take the job. Because you know James is calling Kevin for fucking everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's like, hey, how did you do that? Da, da, da. Oh, no, 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 no. watch this, watch this. In the work, in the work. Oh, because man. if there's ever, if there's ever, of all the ideas that we spitball about going back and forth, the one thing that's never batted around is the possibility of a Marvel versus DC situation because Ooh. people don't really, I don't, I personally don't think that people see them on even footing, even though some, there are fans on both sides, some who like one side more than the other. But I think if James can get the formula the way that he wants, I think that's on the table. Ooh. And, and now I don't think actually, we're talking about that. Mm. Because of you saying that, now I got the picture of you, Jackman, dressed as Dark Claw. <laughs> wasn't, there, wasn't there talk about um jason momoa now becoming a lobo for some reason yes yes that is on the table they are they're they because the, the don't forget the flash movie is going to reset the entire universe i gotta reset as in turn the fish guy into a fucking murdering yes yeah, <laughs> reset everything the day one there's going to be new well superman, new in fairness they turned uh superman into adam at one point well, okay yeah. all right fair That's enough cute. That's true. I'm just glad that Michael Keaton is a part of the Flashpoints. So yes. I you know that if we're going to reset everything. It started with Keaton. That's right. <laughs> we're going to end it with Let's the man that started it. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here with our final glance. And uh, I'm going to let Billy start us off. Your okay, last so... thoughts on the Ant Man film. Well, I still think it's actually an okay watch. I still think, I mean, it's not the best film, but I'm actually seeing it for a second time this weekend. So that says something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be All right. It. AJ. I'll be playing the hell out of it when it gets on Disney Plus. Uh, you know, think about the order here Love and Thunder, <laughs> Wakanda Forever, and then Ant Man. We went goofy, extremely sad. It's so kind of sad. playful. <laughs> so yeah, it's, just yeah. kind of, it's just kind of whimsical about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a range of emotion. So, uh, I'm actually a fan of the, the Disney Plus series as well. So, I'm looking forward to a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, not not a whole lot of talk going on about Armor Wars, but I got my mind, I got my eyes on that too. That one got switched from a series to a movie, so you know that's going to be big. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with that. So, Don Cheadle's uh, swan song. Yeah. So, Ant Man. Uh, I, I appreciate as a wrestling guy to have an MCU film with Mania in there. Yeah, uh, I'm with it. We gotta. Can we flesh Cassie out a little bit more? Yeah, where'd she get all that from? Because <laughs> this rocket science for dummies book that she has at her house is really kicking ass. I, I don't know how she. <laughs> she I don't know. She did like a short circuit number five scan through with the books. Yeah, uh, and she did. Well, that was an outdated reference. It was uh, uh, Wonder, <laughs> well, uh, 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 Superboy from Titans. When all of a sudden, yeah, there, you go. The same, there you go. That's more recent. How about that? Yeah, there we go. There we go. <clears throat> I'm an old guy, guys. I'm sorry, but yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ant Man and, and and the Wasp. I forget the Ant Man and Quantum because it was no Wasp, right? Except for the other Wasp. <laughs> it was it was the wrong wa- Ant Man and the wrong Wasp. Quantum Mania <laughs> is a is a good watch. <laughs> yes. I give it 87% on my citrus orange meter. Uh, you guys should check it out. It's a good, it's a, it's a good egg. It's a good movie. Yeah, I, I will uh, concur with the, both of these gentlemen. I really enjoyed the movie overall. Yes, there were a lot of things that I questioned. Yes, there were a lot of things that just didn't make sense. And yes, there were a lot of literal things that walked around on screen that didn't make sense. But I'm waiting for a Marvel I Have Holes t-shirt. Yeah, I have holes I have, in exclamation points. Just yeah, <laughs> right. I have holes. That's going to be tough to explain at the airport when you get to the <laughs> yeah, exactly when you're going through TSA. What's yeah. what the, what's wrong with it? You yeah. all have holes. Exactly. And I'm and I'm sure I'm not the only one. When they numbered our holes that I was counting, was I the only one counting to make sure that that shit was accurate? Because I'm like, yes. Yeah, shit. 
He said it's... seven holes. I'm like, no, nah, that's not right. That two nine holes, two finger holes, two, mouth. Three. That's five. The nostrils, that's seven. But I got a butthole and a dick hole. Yeah, yeah. So that's like nine. So I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, I think he's off. <laughs> he's a little off, that little yeah. guy. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Yeah. But uh, I think that, uh, yes, it's going to be hard for the casual viewer, like you said, to watch it. But when you do watch it, it's going to be probably more fun than a lot of the other stuff that's out there. So I really think that uh, you give it a chance. Don't listen to what these little internet trolls are saying and get in there and tag in. Tag us in. This is the quantum mania. It's time. The other company's got Ezra Miller. This can't be that bad. (laughs) (laughs) Beating people and grooming children. Nobody on this cast to my knowledge. I don't know what, <laughs> right. I, wouldn't say, I, I don't know what Darren does master, in his own spare time, but uh, yeah. to my knowledge, no one here has been beaten or kidnapped at all. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, AJ, so good to see you, Master and Commander. So glad to have you back on the wonderful interwebs. Uh, you're looking great. Can't to see you. Wait what you do oh, more. Man, uh, man look at the gun show. Yeah, they're throwing it off, showing it off. Billy, oh, as always. We'll have to pay for further. Oh, okay. Oh, you're going to start an OnlyFans? Is that what's happening? Only hands, baby. Only hands, baby. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. So excited to see where you go from there. And, of course, Good meeting you, Bill. Yeah. This Good is nice the first time they met, even though uh, <laughs> so yeah. the weird thing I do is, like, friends. I was in an awkward laugh. First time they've met. Ha, 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 ha. Totally not my intention. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am Joe Dove for Spectrum Sanctorum. Uh, please comment your favorite moments below. What did you think of Ant-Man and the Quantum Mania? We're going to leave the Wasp out of that because she wasn't really there. And again, please be sure to subscribe. Be sure to follow both of us on the interwebs. Uh, you can follow me at Spectrum Sanctorum. And then, of course, AJ Arsena, Master Commander. That's where you can find him. And Billy doesn't have uh, internets. Uh, we're lucky to have him on the show. So, Billy, you can find... Billy's a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps his sanity about him. That's Billy, you can find on the street. It's, uh, if you want to get those hands. Don't do that. Isn't yeah, that just... Operating? <laughs> Isn't there already Billy for Billy? Screen? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> We're giving him the motion, not our Billy. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. All right, until next time, guys. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>